in this in this dynamic tension that's built up in our culture, the the death culture, which is the dominant culture, makes very good use of rhetoric, and they're very clever at trying to turn the conversation around and represent themselves as the culture of life, which of course you know any clever rhetorician would do would try to. Uh, you know, distort it and, and make it seem that uh, that's the side they're on because, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough sell to say that you're on the side of the culture of death, you know, even though by our behavior in the world uh, it's clear that the dominant Western corporatized, uh, militarized culture is uh, not, uh, uh, you know, not uh, well, what's the term? Not, not friendly to life, in a sense. Not friendly to, you know, our biological existence. Not friendly to nature and the sustenance of life on Earth. So, you know, you get these distorted values. The idea that uh, a frozen embryo has a soul that must be preserved at all costs, even though it's stem cell research could potentially help millions of people and if that were true then you could say any cell has a soul that must be preserved. I mean life and consciousness permeates uh, the biosphere at all, all levels or this notion that you know abortion must never be allowed even in the cases of rape or incest even uh, at the risk of the health of the mother. Um, this is this is not a reasonable position. Um, what what partly what distorts the value is the notion that quantity of life must always trump quality of life. Quality of life is not even part of the discussion, not part of the dialogue. Once you're born, whether you're a frozen embryo or a, a fetus, you know you're pretty much on your own as far as. Uh, making your life, you know, tolerable. You know, some of the values of the death culture, I think, are embodied very much in what Dick, Dick Cheney said. He said, the American way of life is non-negotiable. And what that is, uh, is a subtext, is that America consumes 30% of the world's resources and we're 5% of the world's population. And what is articulated in this idea is that we will, at all costs, defend our right to overconsume, to unsustainably uh, use the world's resources, to push other people out of the way if we have to conquer countries or decimate ecosystems or deplete the world's uh, resources, we will do that because Americans need their plasma TVs and their SUVs and this, can, this life of blind consumerism, which is one of the ways that the death culture keeps everyone distracted. Then on Monday, this audience thinks they just missed the hottest ticket in television. Watch this. Hey, right ah! For the first time in history, one more deserving audience. One more magical hour. My number one favorite thing ever. A special only on Oprah performance. The incomparable Josh Groban and living legend Johnny Mathis together. Plus a show-ho-ho, stopper finale. Open the box, girl! We are saying enough for the regime! This is a corrupt regime! We are saying enough for the regime! We hear much talk about the, uh, the uh, sacrifice of jobs, the sacrifice of economic prosperity for the environment, but it's a, uh, it's a silly uh, argument and it doesn't really hold water because if we destroy the environment, uh, there won't be any jobs for anyone. But the notion is that, you know, if we try to live sustainably, if we try to reduce our impact 
on the planet, this is seen and propagated through the media as somehow un-American and uncapitalistic. Uh, our job is to consume, uh, to be good consumers and not to question authority. So many things in the death, death culture, in the environment that's been created, cannot be discussed in any rational way. They're discussed in terms of sound bites, slogans, no actual dialogue takes place. And these things are essentially tools or weapons that the death culture uh, uses to paralyze people's minds and to prevent people from actually thinking and asking questions about some of these assumptions that are uh, you know, presented as so built in to the Western mindset that they're not even open to question, they're not open to discussion. Uh, and out of this comes the notion that we own nature. Nature is in the first place because it's part of this world and not this projected world beyond death where we'll achieve salvation, but because nature is part of this world, it's devalued. It has no value. And it's simply here to be exploited. We can own it, we can deplete it, we can rape it, uh, we can criminalize it if we want to. If necessary, we can destroy it because our salvation does not come in this world. So, you know, the Western culture, the death culture, inculcates this idea in people from earliest childhood, this idea that this world is not to be valued and nothing in this world is to be valued. Their notion, for example, as Reagan said, government is not the solution to the problem. Government is the problem. This idea that there's no common good, that government can only um, be bad for people, and death culture masquerading as life culture. Uh, spends a great deal of rhetoric on the notion of that we should get governments off our backs and that people should not have that interference but what they really mean when you see it articulated is they're saying they should get they want government off the backs of corporations uh, they want you know they want government very much involved and on people's back when it comes to personal decisions about your behavior for example to have an abortion or not, the choice to have a child, your sexual proclivities, whether you choose to uh, marry, whether you're gay or heterosexual, they want to prohibit that, they want to control how you die, they want to control even whether you are allowed to make the decision to die. Uh, they want to control our plants, they want to, whatever is not patented, they would like to prohibit. They want to control drugs, obviously, uh, what we're allowed to read, what we're allowed to think, what we ultimately can experience. I mean, this is all part of the agenda of the death culture. Uh, and uh, we need to resist this. We need to, I think, take a stand for personal freedom. And the notion should be the, the uh, operative uh, premise should be that as long as it doesn't hurt other people, it should be allowed. It's not really other people's business. And, but this is not uh, how the death culture wants it to be. I mean, the, the laws that have been implemented in government to regulate personal behavior uh, are really an inheritance from this Judeo-Christian notion. I mean, in that sense, we are you know, still dealing with this, with this uh, cultural baggage that has been put on us by the church uh, and contemporary American society, Western society is a, an, uh, you know, an instance of that, trying to essentially, uh, you know, codify church doctrine into jurisprudence, into legislation. The state calls its own violence law, but that of the individual crime. And we see 
that very much, you know, in the way that government operates. Government is free to carry out all sorts of uh, violent acts, wars, and, uh, and this sort of thing, and yet the individual's acts are the ones that are prosecuted. Um, the, uh, the leaders are above the law. Those are the rules of the game under the death culture. Uh, the individual uh, has no rights. Corporations have rights.